While the Friday the 13th game had a somewhat bumpy development cycle, it's no secret that the developers of the game are die-hard fans of the film series. Naturally, it makes sense that the game itself would ooze with secrets, references, and easter eggs showing admiration to the film series that it's based off of. And we're about to check them out. Hi, I'm Brendan with The Leaderboard, and we're here to give you the scoop on the creepiest and coolest easter eggs in Friday the 13th, the game. Don't get caught in a sleeping bag. <laughs> Number 1. Roads It may be hard to notice sometimes, since more often than not you'll be too busy running away from a giant man trying to kill you, but there are actual road names in this game. These names of the roads are not accidents, either. Each and every one of them are name references to people who have worked on the film series or actors in the films. Some of the roads that stand out the most are Palmer's Pass, which is a reference to Betsy Palmer, the actress who played Jason's mother in the films. Hodder's Pass is named after Kane Hodder, Jason himself in parts 7-10 to 10 of the film series, along with doing motion capture for the game. And finally, another road is Cunningham Road, which is a reference to Sean S. Cunningham, better known as the man who created the Friday the 13th series itself. Number 2, Pamela Voorhees Any fan of the franchise knows that Pamela Voorhees, Jason's mother, was the one pulling a lot of the strings when it came to Jason's actions. She was even the main villain for the first movie. In each game session at the end of it, Jason goes back to his shack where he's greeted by a shrine of Pamela, who congratulates him on a job well done or chastises him for not killing more counselors. That shack is an actual location on each map, where it spawns is randomized to a degree and it takes some searching to track down, but if a female counselor happens to find it, they can wear Pamela's sweater. Doing this is actually the first step to killing Jason, but even if slaying the big guy isn't your ultimate aim, it still unlocks a nifty achievement, and it can be used to stun Jason by pressing the Q button if your situation gets dire. Be careful though, the sweater is only a one-time use item, and Jason is alerted when you find his cabin. Better move fast. Number 3, Second Body in the Shrine In the Shrine, players may notice that there's actually a full-bodied corpse in there as well. Many fans have speculated that this is the body of Alice Hardy, who appears in the first two films, dying tragically at the beginning of the second. See, Jason's shrine to his mother is actually a painstakingly accurate recreation of the shrine near the end of Friday the 13th Part 2. Jason's first kill in this movie? Poor Alice, who is the counselor that killed Pamela at the end of Part 1. What makes the whole thing extra creepy is that it's obvious that Alice was some sort of sacrifice to his mother's severed head. Mama's boy indeed. Number 4, Pamela's Tapes In each of the maps, cassette tapes that have no bearing on mission objectives or escaping can be found randomly in drawers. What is on these tapes? It's actually interviews with Pamela herself. I always have done that. I've always protected him. Always. My Jason is very special. Yes, ma'am, I'm sure he was. The tapes depict an interview or possibly an interrogation of Pamela after Jason had drowned at Camp Crystal Lake. The tapes go more in depth on exactly what happened that day and even give glimpses of who Jason's father was. The tapes are extremely difficult to find as they appear to be randomly generated in the game. And I mean the really difficult. I'm not over exaggerating this. They don't always spawn in a level and their location is randomized in one of the hundreds of drawers. I have personally clocked over 60 hours of playing this game according to Steam, and I haven't found a single one. My excuse was that I was being chased by a masked killer and it was real scary, but for diehard fans of the series, these tapes are well worth listening to if you can track them down. The tapes were recorded by voice actress Jen Burton, who did justice to Betsy Palmer by giving a creepy and spine-chilling performance in the tapes. Also, the dialogue itself was written by Friday the 13th Part 6 director and writer Tom McLaughlin. Number 5, Versions of Jason What's a Friday the 13th game with no Jason? Well, it would be a pretty lame game. Fortunately, Jason Voorhees is front and center in the game, to the point where he might just be a teeny tiny bit too powerful. But hey, regardless of being OP or not, it would be kind of a bummer to play as only one version of Jason, especially when he's had such a variety of looks over the years. Fortunately, there are plenty of skins to choose from when it comes to playing as Jason. In Friday the 13th, the game, you can play as six different versions of Movie Jason, along with two bonus skins as well. You can choose Jason from Friday the 13th part 2, our personal favorite bag-headed weirdo, part 3, part 6, part 7, part 8, and part 9, Jason Goes to Hell. One of the bonus skins that came as a pre-order incentive with the game was designed by none other than Tom Savini, who is the original makeup artist that brought Jason Voorhees to life in the first film. Savini is a bit of a film legend, having done makeup and special effects for some of the most acclaimed and beloved horror films of all time. This was the first new design of Jason since the remake of Friday the 13th back in 2009, and Savini has said he designed the skin with his idea of what would have happened to Jason after he went to hell. The second bonus skin came as sort of an apology from developers Ilphonic and Gun Media. The game had a bit of a bumpy launch after player numbers exceeded the expectations set by the developers, which naturally crashed their servers on launch weekend. Hard. 
To make up for this, the developers released a new free update less than a month later on June 20th, 2017, which gave players a new Jason skin that's based off his original sprite in the NES game, where he appears primarily purple with a green bluish mask. What's even better than the new skin? The classic 8-bit music that pumps in right when he's on your tail. Number 6, Unmasking Jason. Yes, it is possible to unmask the monster himself, even that bag-headed weirdo. If you hit him directly, there is a chance you can actually knock off Jason's mask and put it in your inventory. You can't wear the mask, sorry, but it's still very beneficial to get. How? It took the player base weeks to find out, so don't feel bad for not knowing. If you and your ragtag team of camp counselors are trying to get Pamela's sweater, then it'll greatly benefit you to get Jason's mask first. Remember when I said that Jason would be alerted if somebody went into Pamela's shack? Yeah, if somebody enters Jason's shack while he still has his mask, then he will hear his mother's voice claiming that somebody is trying to hurt her, which naturally means he'll quick travel to you and, well, you know, you can guess the rest. However, if a player has the mask in their inventory, the player controlling Jason will not be alerted that someone is in the cabin, making for an easy sneak in to get the sweater. This is of course immensely beneficial if you're trying to kill Jason with your team. He won't even know somebody has his mom's sweater and your chances of sweet revenge are exponentially improved. Number seven, Jason's beautiful face. Another cool thing about being able to take off Jason's mask is that each skin for Jason has a unique face. These faces of course match what he would have looked like for each film, but in the movies we rarely see Jason without his mask. It's usually like, like, like not even a minute. So not only does unmasking Jason bring you one step closer to revenge, it's neat to be able to see him without a mask for each film iteration that appears in the game. If you're lucky, you'll also get a peek at Tom Savini's vision of the face of post-hell Jason. Spoilers, it's not a, uh, it ain't pretty. Number eight, Let's Player, Immortalized. One of the more popular YouTubers, H2O Delirious, actually had his channel name immortalized in the game. An achievement in game is unlocked by going to a gravesite at the Higgins Haven map and approaching a tombstone with a teddy bear by it. If you look at the actual tombstone, you'll notice it reads H2O Delirious, laugh to death. It's no secret that H2O has been a huge and vocal supporter of the game. He personally contributed $1,000 to the Kickstarter, and that donation level offered the perk to get your name immortalized in the game. However, it seemed like the developers wanted to add a bonus achievement for finding his grave specifically. On his YouTube channel, H2O Delirious is famously protective of teddy bears and is often distressed when they're killed or destroyed in games. What's the name of this achievement, you ask? Teddy Protector. Just another sign that Ilphonic and Gun really care about you. Number nine, license plates and cars. There are a few vehicles in the maps that counselors can attempt to repair in order to make an escape. One of the cars is blue and has a somewhat unique license plate on it that has knob sco etched into it. Sure, it might seem like a random set of letters that any license plate could have. However, this is a YouTube video about references, secrets, and Easter eggs, so of course there's something more to these letters. The original Friday the 13th movie was filmed at a camp in Blairstown, New Jersey. The name of that camp? Camp Nobebosco. It's not exact, of course, because license plates don't have nine characters on them, but knob sco definitely evokes the initials of Nobebosco. Sure, it might be a coincidence, but to us, this feels 100% intentional. There's a second car in the game as well that can be fixed to make an escape. It's a yellow car, and while at first glance it might not seem like anything special, it's actually the same car used in Friday the 13th Part 2. Like, the exact same car. The developers even put the same items that appear in the film into the car model in the game. We couldn't find a direct analog to the blue car in the movies, but it might be worth mentioning that it bears a striking resemblance to the 1977 Chevy Impala that stalls in Friday the 13th Part 7. The car in the game is notoriously hard to drive, so, uh, reference? I don't know, dude, I always take the boat out. Number 10, Tommy Jarvis. By now, we all know that the only way to kill Jason in the game is to become Tommy Jarvis. The voice behind Tommy is actually the same actor who played him in Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives, Tom Matthews. The developers wanted the game to feel as authentic as possible, which is why they recruited Matthews for the role and had Kane Hodder, the man who played Jason a handful of times in the movies, do the mocap work for Jason in game. Tom Matthews also played Joey in the first two Return of the Living Dead movies. Number 11, Army of Darkness. A handful of the achievements for the game are references to the franchise itself, which makes sense since, you know, fans and stuff. However, there is one achievement that's actually a reference to a different low-budget horror film franchise, The Evil Dead. The achievement, This Is My Boomstick, which requires you to shoot Jason with the shotgun 13 times, is a not-so-subtle reference to Army of Darkness, the third film in the Evil Dead trilogy. There's a scene in Army of Darkness where the protagonist, Ash, is trying to frighten peasants of the medieval town he's been transported back to, and refers to his shotgun as his boomstick. 
Number 12, the Necronomicon. In the virtual cabin, it's possible to spot the Book of the Dead, also known as the Necronomicon. This book famously first appeared in the cult classic film The Evil Dead. The book also has a cameo appearance in part 9, Jason Goes to Hell, which makes sense since this book is all about that hell business, has a lot of demons and stuff. This book doesn't appear to do anything at all in the cabin, but it's a neat little reference to some comic lore. In 2007, Wildstorm and Dynamite Entertainment ran a six-issue comic called Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash, in which these titular horror icons battle it out. This all ends with Jason being frozen under Crystal Lake next to the Necronomicon. Guess he got out and put it in his cabin? You know, like as a reminder of that fun weekend? I don't know. I mean, this is also the guy who fastidiously maintains his dead mom shrine. So I don't know. Maybe don't ask him to decorate your house is what I'm saying. Finally, number 13, color. It's no secret that the first Friday the 13th had a unique look, especially when it came to color. It's not by accident either. Director Sean S. Cunningham had an incredibly small budget when making the first film and was limited with how he could light scenes. Remember, this wasn't your iPhone he was shooting on. It was 16 millimeter film. That stuff is way less sensitive to light than we're used to. So to solve this, Cunningham had the idea to have the characters and environment pieces stand out with color. Doors would be bright red, one of the more classic looks was that of a yellow raincoat, and so forth. Now, today we might attribute this to the fact that people in the 80s generally dressed like Technicolor aliens, and we would be totally right in that assumption, but it's also cool to know that there was some directorial intent behind it. Way to go, Reagan era. A yellow raincoat sure enough can be found in the game in one of the cabins. The art direction itself also makes sure that the doors are highlighted with unique colors so that players know exactly where to go. And in keeping with the tone of the movies, the general fashion sense of our beloved counselors is suitably Cindy Lauper. Man, I guess we should color highlight our next leaderboard video. And there you have it! Once again, I'm Brendan, and thanks for watching 13 Easter eggs, secrets, and references in Friday the 13th, the game. Did you already know some of these? Did we miss any others? This is still a pretty new game, so people are discovering things all the time. Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to click the bell icon to become part of the notification squad, and also check out some of our other videos by clicking links in the description. If you like getting more from your games, make sure to subscribe to the leaderboard, where we help you game smarter.